A11. Hashtag, please care, subtitle, homelessness. Coming from the WashingtonPost.com and per alwaysness for hashtag for future husband hard heart. Oh, yes, yes. And this week, let's shuffle the cards or whatever. It's do you want to be in a long term committed relationship? Question mark. Explain. And yes, I will. I absolutely will. And underrated hype. TBA11, which is coming from none other than the exceptional, the extraordinary, the uh, phenomenal diva, Nancy Wilson. Her song, Face It Girl, It's Over. Uh, I had to sing that to myself quite a bit. <laughs> yes. And that is. It's a performance from circa 1968 on the Ed Sullivan show featuring a young Nancy Wilson on the Ed Sullivan show at the Ed Sullivan show all coming up this week on hashtag verse TV and it's hashtag verse TV 259 a 11. And welcome. Welcome to Hashtag Verse TV. And, ooh, the random question. Oh, I wish. I wish this would go like, voila. I sound, anyway, okay. Yes. So the randomly selected question this week is going to be, and it's going to be just a moment taker, but that's okay. Esta bien and esta okay and estados unidos. That's how you say United States in Espanol. Okay. What was the last mistake you made that you're sure you'll probably Make again. Ooh. I don't know, because that's not where I thought this was going as I was reading it. That I'm sure I'll probably make again. I don't know. <sighs> I talk about my love all the time. And yes, we were in communication today to Tambien. Um Pia. That's how you say it in Kiswahili. Pia. Yes. And mis <sighs> he doesn't make the same mistakes twice. He's exceptional. I, I spoke about that a couple of weeks ago. And I try not to make the same mistakes twice either. And as we learn each other and the differences, cultural differences, between us, sometimes I want to say between and among, but no, it's just the two of us, just the two of us. We can make it if we try, just the two of us, me and him. Yes, him and, him and I. Yes, okay, yes. And yeah, but, but that's how I feel about that and as far as my hmm, song choice of the week, it is coming from none other than another exceptional, phenomenal woman, the Mary Wilson. You might remember her name from Supremes, 1979. This is one of her solo ventures from the Mary Wilson self-titled Expanded Edition album. Her song is 
you danced my heart around the stars. And you danced my heart around the stars. It's day you carried me so far. She's belting. She's a belting diva. And... Mm. I will, instead of going where I was going to go, in reference to everything, she is a belting diva. Diana Ross is a belting diva. Cindy Birdsong, is that her name? Or is that the name of a woman from In Vogue? I'm sorry, but I assume all three of them can belt. And Diana Ross is a belting diva, as is Mary Wilson. I did not hear the solo album for the third woman in the Supremes, but those two are belting divas. And as far as you danced my heart around the stars, which came out in 1979. 1979 is actually the year my mom and dad got married. And I think it is so interesting. Yes, I was their first child and I was born 1983. So unlike a lot of people, they did things a little bit differently, I'll say. And thinking about the fact that that song came out the year they were married, that gets me excited about my love, my future husband, and what songs will be popular and name, and what, what songs will be played, will be popular songs at the time that the two of us get married. And that's exciting to me. Like, uh, what will, you know, I was talking with an Uber driver, uh, yesterday, this weekend, when I got my hair cut and about, uh, what is her name, y'all? Um, I don't, I, her name isn't coming to mind right now because I listened to the, Mary Wilson song. Huh. It's, huh. Okay. Anyway, continue. And we were talking about this other woman who's a new age woman, and she writes a lot of songs for artists as well. In addition to, okay, for those of you who can tell me the name, her song that's popular that was, or that's particularly popular right now is she get it from a mama. And I remember the Uber driver and I ta talking about how she's like digging all up in her purse like a grandma with a peppermint and the uber driver was like yes because that's how grandma that drags or reaches for a peppermint you know deep down all up in there's something like a grandma with a peppermint anyway but in talking about her i don't know why i want to say her name is janelle monet her name is not janelle monet her name is didn't get it okay but yes we were talking about how in her interviews, she's actually quite well-spoken. And I said, it excited me. Like, I feel like I'm watching the classic divas of the 90s and 80s. Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Mariah Carey being 1990, Whitney Houston being 1985. And I was like, oh, I love it. Because she could have been not articulate, but she was articulate. And that is cool. On up in my manner, like a grandma with a peppermint. Anyway, but yeah, that's how she sings. But the way she speaks is just so eloquent. She's deeper. 
I still can't think of her name, y'all. I'm sorry. But yeah, I don't know what will be the popular song on my wedding day. Uh, married. Marital bliss. We're going to go into all of that today. Every single piece of it. Yes. All right. Hashtag Verse TV family. And I don't. Ooh. <clears throat> I am so ahead of schedule. I don't know. I feel like I can talk about a lot more, but but see what happens is toward the end of the show, I end up being like, oh my gosh, I don't have as much time as I thought. So I need to rush through this topic. No, what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and move into the first topic, like, share, subscribe, Share again, and please do not forget to click like. Thank you very much. Okay. Please care. Subtitle, Homelessness. WashingtonPost.com, hashtag First TV A11A. WashingtonPost.com, National. As Supreme Court takes up homeless ban, a city's unhoused feel abandoned. By Reese Tybalt and Anne Maramau, April 20th, 2024, at 3.35 p.m. Eastern. Grants Pass, Oregon. Laura Gutowski pitches her tent in the same park where her son, grew up playing Little League Baseball. Jonathan Babb's favorite place to sleep is a few feet from the river where his twin brother died when they were teenagers. They are two among hundreds of people living outside in this small conservative city in Southern Oregon's Rogue Valley wedged between the Siskiyou and Coast Mountains, and their experiences are part of an escalating humanitarian crisis. Article continued below. It is sad, quite unfortunate, how close we can be to homelessness how close people in general can be to homelessness, yet people still don't care. P people are just like, uh, this Ted stuff, be people being homeless is an inconvenience for me. I'm sorry, I'm so far removed from that. And I remember, and this was a sobering thing to think about how I think it was somebody on the radio spoke to the fact that most Americans are just two to three emergency, consecutive emergencies away from homelessness. Like pe people just don't understand how it can be anyone. It can be any of us, anybody. So stop looking down on the homeless people. They talk about how the city referenced in the article is named Grants Pass, Oregon, which is like way out there in Western Oregon. Like, wow. And the, guess how much the average studio apartment is running for in Grants Pass, Oregon? The average studio apartment in Grants Pass, Oregon, goes for $1,000. The average studio apartment in Grants Pass, Oregon, goes for $1,000. I remember it when I was living in Maryland, 
And for a moment, I was living in Laurel, which is 30 minutes outside of both cities, 30 minutes outside south of Baltimore, 30 minutes north of D.C. So it's like right in the middle. Very cool. And for a time that I was living there, I was like, you know what? D.C. is like becoming amazing now. So maybe I want to move to D.C., the district of Columbia. And in pricing places, the closest to something that I would pay was a studio apartment. And I would not pay this much. The studio apartment was running for $900 a month for a studio, and I would not pay that. It's unfortunate, though, because who can pay that for a studio apartment? Not only was it a studio apartment, but it was a studio apartment in a once questionable part of the city. And again, Grants Pass, Oregon, you're paying a, th like that was $900 a month to be in this nation's capital. Now I'm sure it's probably gone way up. Considering that Grants Pass, Oregon, middle of nowhere, is going for a thousand dollars a month that is insane and you expect people to afford that and have a place to live and no many people cannot afford that and that's why many people are opting to live in a tent in a public park. And we don't like those tents because those tents are ugly. It's ugly. Uh, I just don't like knowing that poor people exist in my presence. Uh, get those tents away. And it's so unfortunate. Like the article said, and I read, one of the women pitched her tent to live in, in the same park where her son used to play little league baseball back in the day before she hit those three emergencies, two to three emergencies, or whatever brought her to that point. Oh, oh no. All right. So th this can't be too, too long. But yes, especially considering I have absolutely nothing to drink. And yeah, as far as tent cities, yeah, there's a tent city in Grant Pass, Grants Pass, Oregon. That's unfortunate. There's also, or there was also, a tent city in Washington, D.C., in Baltimore, Maryland, in other words, places that I've actually lived and seen the tent cities. And that's so unfortunate, you guys. The article also spoke to one guy, a dude, a teen, who... was messing with a woman in Tent City and like knocked on her tent like, hey, come out, girl, just to like punch her or whatever. Things are, are already so hard and I remember one guy who I interacted with years ago. I think it was freshman year, maybe sophomore year. And he was selling newspapers in Washington, D.C. And he was selling homeless newspapers. 
And at the time, I decided to do one of my projects or reports on homelessness in D.C. Because I was like, oh, you know, there are so many homeless people in D.C., so many homeless people begging for money, money in D.C. And it's so problematic because uh, I just don't want to see it. I want to go to my classes in peace and return to my dorm in peace without having to deal with it. So thank you for this paper because I need to do some research on homelessness, sir. And the guy was so nice to me. He was like, well, you can interview me for this project because I'm homeless. And that's what he said. And I was like, what? Because he was so well-spoken. And it's like, but I thought stuff like that was supposed to protect you from homelessness because they act like homeless people just are just drug-ridden, ignorant, can't communicate people. And he was, I, I, I know sometimes people say he was so well-spoken in a put-down kind of way, but he was very well-spoken. And it touched me particularly because I was like, but I thought people were well-spoken, don't have to deal with homelessness. Homelessness is for other people. And I was like, wow, what? And he was so nice to me. And anyway, and that also, I'm also reminded of a woman who I spoke with because my perspective on homelessness after speaking with him and after doing that project adjusted and then I became less of that person who was like, oh, you're homeless. Uh, get away from me. Oh, please. Uh. I was never quite like that, though. But still, I remember this one woman asked, uh, I was walking home from the bus station or from the train, the metro, Washington, D.C., from the metro and she asked me if I had some change that I could spare and I was like I think I did so I gave it to her or whatever and we actually engaged in conversation and I, re I remember I don't know if I asked if she was homeless or she volunteered that she is homeless. And I remember looking at her hair and I was like, wow, that's interesting because clearly she's somebody who at some point in her life would get her hair done and done nicely. But she's clearly been through some things because it wasn't that nice anymore. And... Yeah. She explained to me her story of what led her to homelessness. And she explained that she and her husband were doing quite well. They were in the loved middle class and that they had, they were living in Bowie, Maryland. Her husband was a barber, and you know barbers, actually particularly skilled barbers, can make good money. So he was a barber, and she was an administrative assistant or executive assistant, and they were making good money and just bought a town home in Bowie, Maryland. Maryland, whatever. And 
those who know about PG County know that Bowie is one of the uh, nice outside of particularly nice parts of town. And I remember I was the part of the county. And I remember I was like, huh. So you and your husband bought a townhome in Bowie and they were raising a family. And she, she was like, yeah. And we were doing really well, middle class, comfortably well. We were doing comfortably well. But my husband would not stay out of the streets. And I kept telling him, hey, baby, we make enough money. You don't have to sell drugs. You don't have to do any of that anymore. Please, we're good. You're barbering my administrative assistant work. We can support our family and live well. Please stay out of the streets. Please stay out of the streets. And he wouldn't. And next thing you know, he goes to prison. And then all of the finances that they were once able to afford together as a couple fell on her and on her administrative assistant, executive assistant salary. And on top of that, wow, one of her aunts had a stroke, I think, and this is sort of coming back to me. And she had to take care of her aunt now. In addition to the two kids, in addition to the mortgage, all on her salary. And as a result, guess what? Of all of that stress, she had a stroke. And of course, when you're an administrative assistant, you can't afford a stroke because you can't take notes. So she lost her job. And next thing you know, she too was homeless. And again, to reiterate, homelessness What we need to do is learn to live love, absolute love. And as my pastor was saying in church this weekend is not doting love. Doting love is like, oh, that's so cute. Oh, I love you, darling. Yes, girl. Okay. Yes. Not doting love, but real love. Genuine love. I almost say Mary J. Blige. Although, interesting, very quick side note. That song is... Not quite as happy as someone might think. Anyway. Ooh. And yes, I understand. It's a lot. We have a lot of stuff that we're already dealing with in life. And life can be hard. And to turn around and say, hey, in addition to caring about the difficulties in your life, care about the difficulties in other people's lives. It can be difficult. If we all learn to live love and love one another, we'll all lighten each other's burdens. And life won't be so hard for anyone. A utopia of sorts. Not of sorts, a utopia. Happy, peaceful. If we learn to all live love for everyone, true love, truly care 
about the concerns of our brethren, our sistren, our siblings, then we'll be okay. All right. Like, share, subscribe, click like again. Nope. Like, share, subscribe, share again, and don't forget to click like. Please and thank you very much. For future husband, heart, heart, subtitle, totally, at tonight's conversation, hashtag verse TV, A 11 B. Do you want to be in a long-term committed relationship? Explain. Yes, since I was 19. Absolutely, yes, I did. Now, the question is, huh, was I ready? I'd say not until I was like in my 30s. I wanted it. I wanted it the whole time. Like I said, my thought days, sexual exploration days, I was just looking for love in all the wrong bedrooms, right? I wanted it, but I wasn't ready for it. I remember I used to be like, I want love, real love, true love, lasting love, just like they have in the movies. But I have to keep it a secret because I don't know about t- being openly gay. And this was an in. Huh. Yeah. I don't, because I don't know about being openly gay. I was like, it, we need to be secret love. Your secret love. Why can't we tell somebody? Yes, Luther Vandross. Yes. All right. And I was thinking myself and my love. This is how I used to think. Like I said, I wasn't ready until about 30s, until my 30s. And we're already at 30 minutes. 30 minutes. And I was like, okay, so maybe what I can do since, and I was like openly myself kind of in college and then post-college, I kind of started going back in the closet. Yeah, and I was kind of like, maybe my love and I can just be together and like run away from everything and live in secret and live a secret life together away from everybody so neither one of us has to come out of the closet to everyone because oh my gosh I was not ready for that until my good Early 30s. Yeah. FYI, if you're watching by any chance, you know who you are, friend. It's beca- because of you. It's because of you and your being so, I don't care what people think. They're not living my life. I'm living my life. And it's because of you that that rubbed off on me. I thank you. That means a lot to me and will not be forgotten. And yes, I met him in my early 30s. And I remember in my, I was 24 and my first time I said love 
to somebody and actually meant it fully. He was 28. And I remember he wanted... Hmm. To be able to get married. And... I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for marriage. I mean, I love you and stuff like, you know, but I don't know if I'm ready for marriage to a man because I don't know if I ever want to be married to a man. And being that you're almost, almost 30 that means in gay years, you're almost old. And as a result, I don't want to be the one holding you back from marriage because you need to find your man soon who you can go. Because this, when I was 24, what we had to do, y'all, was go to um, Massachusetts to get married. That's what us gays had to do back then. So I was like, you're almost old. You need to find a man who is willing to marry you before you get old. At 28, you're almost old. At 40, yes. So, Uh, at 40, um, yeah, at 40, stop. Anyway, but, um, I remember when I first moved to Ohio, I was like, my experience seemed to be, and maybe this was just me going with brand new open eyes to a big new city-ish. And being like, wow, dudes in Ohio are looking for love and are willing to find love now. And it is a beautiful thing. Yes. And I learned that that's not the case. And... I had a uh, few interactions with Ohio dudes that I was like throw, throwing my entire heart into on some throwing my entire heart into I don't think I need to when it stops it's okay but throwing my entire heart into feeling like wow in Ohio, they just do things differently. And men are looking for love from other men. And it's a wonderful thing. And I just need to fall in line and find my man. And yes, we will live together forever and never to part. And that's not how it worked. I remember one dude I interacted with. He was a cutie, though, y'all. He, and yes, Ohio, he had the uh, Thug Life tattoo on his chest, looking all good, and he was like 45. I was like 30. When I first moved here, I was like 37 or so. And he was like 45, so well within my age range. And I remember his thing was, I can name these cities because most of the world just doesn't know where I'm referencing and certainly doesn't know where I live. But long story short, he was coming from... Um, 
seek her heights, right? And coming to me. And he was like, okay. So yes, I live all the way in Shaker Heights, but my car needs new tires. So before I come to see you, can you give me, can you lend me $30, uh, $40 so I can buy new tie, um, a new tire for my car so I can drive up to see you. And I remember years ago, we discussed this topic on hashtag first TV and Yuri asked, she, she was like, you have a thug life tattoo on your chest at 45 years old. Have you ever been to jail? Better question. Huh? How many times have you been to jail? Uh, you just, I don't think that I have to do all that. But she was like, how many times have you been to, j to jail anyway? Now with my love, my heart, the person to whom this is all dedicated, my future husband, I am playing with my whole heart. And people would talk about building with their partner. And I didn't know about such things before. And I was, I, I didn't fully understand it. It sounded significant but I didn't fully understand it. And now with him, I am understanding the significance of building with someone. We've, okay. I'll leave it at, I'm understanding the significance of building with someone how sometimes there will be hard times, miscommunications. Yes. Okay, that is what I'll say. So, yeah, as it's known, we've had our share. There have been miscommunications as we've learned, as we're learning each other's culture and background and everything. Yes. And building with someone is having a mutual desire to make a relationship work, a mutual attraction to each other's uniqueness, and passionate about the same type thing. And we do have all three of those. Yes, we do. And I think... <sighs> There's something to having a partner who you grow through such difficult times, such miscommunications and say, you know what? I still want to be with you. It's still the one, still the one I run to, the one that I belong to. It's still the one I kiss. Good night, still on the one, still the one that I love, the only one I dream of, still the one I kiss. Good night, yes, and I have Wayne. Yes, to be able to look at your partner and tell them. There's still the one. Yes, he is. Yes, future husband. I am speaking with um somebody at a, a company today, let's say. She asked if I would want any extra of the things for another person. And I was like, 
Not yet, but one day for my future husband. Yes, because it's still the one. I used to have a false ending. That was good. All right. Like, share, subscribe, share again, and please do not forget to click like. Thank you. Hashtag underrated hype TV A11 Nancy Wilson face it girl it's over circa 1968 at the Ed Sullivan show hashtag verse TV A11 C. Oh, gets Nancy Wilson. Oh, I love that song. L U V I L U V Nancy Wilson. She is exceptional. Huh. I'm thinking about that in relation to the fact that I just said we all need to love one another with real love. So, yes, I love Nancy Wilson as a fellow human being. Yes, we all need to love. L-O-V-E. Yes, not doting love, not fake, cheap love but real love. Anyway, I love Nancy Wilson and she sings and acts and you can tell by her beautiful and powerful facial expressions as she sang this song. She is exceptional. I remember her on The Parenthood with Robert Townsend and Susan Douglas. She played the grandmother. She, she can act. Oh, I love it. Yes. And oh my gosh, when he glances at his watch, and it is a And you try hard to amuse him, but he doesn't concentrate. Just up plainly. Anyway, but yeah. I love that song, and another Ohio guy that I attempted for before I found my husband to be. We're going to get married, and you're going to hear that cat at some time. But before I met him, I met this other guy, and he, he's nice, and I remember, ooh, he is yet another example of someone. We connected, actually, before I even moved to Ohio, we met on a dating app. And because I, I would sometimes go to Ohio because I have family here, I set up to meet him in person. And this was shortly before I moved to Ohio. And what, what happened with him is he, never mind, never mind. I hope this is working. So his situation, when we first met on that first attempt in Ohio, I was only using a cane. And I was getting around pretty well. And not too long after that, I started using a walker. <sighs> so when I got to Ohio a few months after that, I had to tell him before we met 
that, oh, by the way, now I use a walker currently. And while before things were really good between us, now it was like, oh, a walker. I don't know if I can do that. And even though I was like, we're going to be so exceptional together, us. He said no. And I was like, oh, okay. And I guess it's not that people, okay. And this is the moral of that story. Please, a girl, it's over. Because I had to sing that song to myself a lot about him. I was like, you better face it, girl. It's over. Face it, boy. It's over. Whatever. And I had to realize that. Like, I was into Aretha Franklin's song, United Together, thinking, oh, we're going to be united together forever. It's going to be wonderful. But didn't happen that way. And I had to realize Ohio is no different from any other place. Just like my granddad used to say, people are people. And that's true everywhere you go. Sometimes people are cool. Sometimes individuals are cool. Sometimes they're not. Oh, well. And also, as far as Nancy Wilson, I first fell in love with her musically with her 1997 release called If I Had My Way. And that album is exceptional, contained everything that I loved about 90s diva albums. Check it out. It's not as widely available. Check it out if you can find it. If I Had My Way by Nancy Wilson. Talk to you later. Hashtag Verse TV family. Peace. Hashtag Verse TV and come stay blessed. All right. You better face it, girl. I have enough minutes, really. I'm Aaron Mack. She sets the scene so well with that song. When you're at a corner table and there's nothing much to say. And he's checking his watch. On your date, I've been there. I've had dudes who check their watch on the date. Oh my gosh, how much longer is this thing? No, that's not why I check my watch. Talk to you later, Aztec First TV. Please it, boy. Please it, Aaron. This show for the day, for the week, is over.